Google Plus thing. We're just posting it live. We are live. Yes. Who are we All sharing? Right. Are we sharing trays? Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys go to my stream, welcome to the pre-show. Those of you on YouTube, the real show will start in a few minutes. But anyway, everyone that's here in the uh, the hangout, if you go to my stream, you'll see the embedded player in Google Plus. You can share that so all your friends and family can watch you in action. Strangely, I am not seeing that. You might. You probably have to refresh his page. I did twice. You know, Karen, I tried to start the show. Um, I'm not in the U.S., you know, and it said, I can't. It said <laughs> that you cannot launch an on-air recorded hangout mm. from outside of the U.S. Oh, my God. So what, who did it? So then? I am Trey. <laughs> uh, Will the real yeah. Trey please stand up? <laughs> well, that, that's actually one of the problems with Google is that um, I... I have to give many people my login and password. Um, uh, you know, Dave has to have it for some of the YouTube stuff that he does because he, he manages a lot of our... There's so many videos that flow up to YouTube every week. He manages a lot of that. And then we have other employees at Stuck in Customs that manage everything from uh, uh, Picasa uh, to several other things. And, you know, it's not like... I can have like master control and then I can give certain levels of admin rights to other people. It's like all or nothing. So um, it's kind of a problem. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, in a lot of ways you are a business or a brand, but you're using your personal account instead of having a Google Plus page because if you're using a Google Plus page, you can do exactly those things. You could have your master key but assign other admins to maintain it as well. So we do have that functionality. I You're see. just the edge case. I know, I'm an edge case. Okay. <laughs> but that only affects Google Plus. So if somebody still needed his email and all that and his YouTube, they wouldn't be able to do that through that page either way, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. But you can set up a channel on YouTube, for instance, and make sure that more people can post to it. Right, right. Okay, we'll go ahead and start the five minute timer, Dave. Yes. I wonder where Jaime is. Yeah. Well, he's an artiste. Yeah. The artistes always <laughs> tend to just roll in late. You know. He usually Countdown is going. He usually texts me in a panic right before, and I don't have my cell phone here, so. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a story about being late. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, in this story, this is really a Hans Zimmer story. Uh, he told it to me. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I always show up on time, usually, for people, right? Because I think it's respectful, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, I figure, like, I'm really busy, and people that I meet with are also really busy. So I just try to be respectful and always get there early or get there on time. And, um, and uh, Hans always comes late, which is fine, you know, he's really... <laughs> busy or whatever. I understand. And uh, so he got in late. Um, like, I don't know, looks like 10, 10 minutes late. Cause he's, he's working on the music for Batman 3 and he was all frazzled there. Batman 3 and he was all frazzled there. And, hey, hi, man, I think there's feedback on your hey, screen. Hi, man, I think there's feedback. Probably have it. Are you watching the stream, hi, or something? Are you watching the stream, hi, or something? <laughs> uh, let me... Let me figure this out. Hello, Jaime, by I, the way. I just showed up. I was just I about to email you. We're already yelling at you. <laughs> no, it's okay. We got three minutes to the real show. I, okay. I think you're okay anyway. I think uh, I don't hear yeah, this anymore. Yeah, I think so. the feedback is fixed. So anyway, he shows up late, and he says, uh, he goes, oh, you don't have to forgive me. Um, he goes, I was talking to my friend... Uh, I don't know if he said it was like Steven Spielberg or Joel Silver or just any, you know, plug-in miscellaneous Hollywood guy. And he, he said, it's okay to be late. It makes you human. <laughs> and so now whenever I show up late, I think, oh, you know, it's okay. It's just very human. <laughs> we were talking about this. You brought up this story, Jaime, because you could just show up late. I'm like, oh, you know, he's just like us. He shows up late. He's just a regular guy. 
<laughs> and yet he's yeah, on I mean, you're, you're muted. Just unmute in the Hangout. Um, I want to I run through your audio real quick before the show starts. Uh, how about... Okay, well, I hear you now. Wait. All right, how's, how's Jaime's audio? It's still uh, a little bit of a... Echo, echo. 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 Do you have headphones, Jaime? I do not. It says my microphone. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There it goes. Can you hear me now? We hear you, but we also hear ourselves. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not good. No way. Uh, that's why we're hoping you have, like, iPod headphones or something you can just stick in there. He has never had yeah. feedback in all the Hangouts I've been in. No, I, 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 I don't. It's true. Kelly definitely does have a Hangout size drink. <laughs> I do. Hey guys, how about, how well, about now? Echo, echo. <coughs> Test yeah, you can always tell the Hangout veterans because they come prepared with a giant <laughs> cup or something. <laughs> or two. Yeah, it's not bad right now, I mean. Is it, is testing, it testable testing. at all? Can somebody else say something? Hello. Testing, testing. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I think it's good. Maybe maybe just, uh, just in case, just mute when you're not talking. How about now? Well, I'm not hearing an echo. You guys? It's there. But it's a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to for a second and just see if it goes away. Because if it goes away, then it's something in yours. And if it doesn't, then it's not. No, it is definitely him. Um. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so testing, testing, you don't hear it now, right? No. Right. Okay. Yeah, so how about just, just mute when you're not talking? Like and now it's not muted. Right, we hear ourselves again. So weird. You shouldn't. It might be the acoustics of the room. It might be just bouncing off the wall just right. But I don't know. Who knows why? Just mute when you're not mm. talking. That's all. <laughs> Thirty-eight seconds. That'll be fine. So, Jaime, speaking of being late, how how is your book coming for flat books? <laughs> <laughs> late, late. Touche, Sam. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. I, uh, I'm still struggling with my uh, my microphone situation. How do I sound now? I lost focus. Your sound has always been fine. It's just that we were we were hearing ourselves also through your speakers. You can't now hear it now, though, right? No. Now you're like on a crime I show. I think it's good now. Her. Okay. <laughs> but your video's all blurry now. <laughs> you're you're yeah. like on a crime show. Two seconds. One second. Zero. <laughs> okay. All right, time for the real show. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Trey. Welcome to the Hangout. I'm coming to you live from the British Virgin Islands. I hope my bandwidth holds up okay. Uh, much later in the show, I'll show you, show you some photos um, from here in Virgin Gorda. That's sort of a little bonus time if you're interested. Uh, but tonight's show will be most excellent. Um, I have sort of a special co-host tonight in Karen Hutton. Since I didn't know if I would have bandwidth or not, um, she went through all the trouble of setting up a show. She was going to be sort of my uh, Gary Shandling, my, my stand-in. <laughs> so instead of being my Gary Shandling tonight, she'll be sort of my Andy Richter and, and helping me to run, run the show. Um, Karen, what is the topic for tonight? The topic for tonight is uh, social media and new opportunities for artists. Ah, social media. That will be big someday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I hear. So what we'll do, here's sort of the order of operations so people know what's going on. We'll go through and, and people here will introduce themselves and, uh, you know, you can plug away whatever you want to plug. Um, I have a few housekeeping things to do, including announcing a winner of two free passes to the Google Plus Developers Conference with uh, Scott Kelby in San Francisco coming up very soon. Um, a few other little housekeeping things that are sort of fun, um, and then we'll launch right into the discussion. Uh, after the discussion, we will end with uh, our Google Plus photographer discoveries. We're always finding new people. Uh, we want to share them and get them circled up and get them some circle love. And then for the little bonus time at the end, I'll show you a bunch of new um, unpublished photos uh, that I've just taken over the past few days down here in Virgin Gorda. Okay, so let's start with introductions. Let's go just kind of left to right, because this is arbitrary as any other <laughs> um, ranking. So let's start with uh, Mr. Brian Matias in Portland. Portland, Oregon. Close with the pronunciation. It's, it's Damn Matias. it. I'm sorry. No. It's, Brian Matias. It's, it's what makes us human. 
I'm um, sorry, Brian. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I just call you uh, Brian, though, you know? Brian works. Yeah. Brian, um, my name is Brian Matisse. I'm the I'm a photographer, and I'm also the uh, curriculum and education manager at On One Software, makers of the fine, perfect photo <laughs> suite. Oh, it's inverted in my screen. How oh, cool. Um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm excited to also uh, hang out with Trey and a few others at the Google Plus Photographers Conference in May in a couple of weeks. And uh, you can find my profile at plusbrian.com. Hey, cool. Brian, I'm going to throw something. Just while we didn't discuss this beforehand, but can we give a free copy of On One to a commenter? You can give this copy if you'd like. Ooh. All right. Okay. So if you want to win that, that copy that's been touched by Brian. Oh, oh has it been touched? <laughs> <laughs> touched it's by even, an angel. It's even more valuable. Uh, just, yes. just leave a comment in my stream there on, uh, on Google+. Plus. And uh, Brian will pick a random person um, probably, you know, in the next 24 hours. And uh, no, let's give it 48 hours because these comments carry over to YouTube. Just pick a random winner and, and there you go. Okay, thank you, Brian, for just, uh, you know, succumbing to that crazy idea. <laughs> it's my pleasure to succumb. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, mark that day for our, uh, our feature reel, okay? All right, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris from Google, tell us about you. Well, so my introduction is going to be way boring because I'm not planning on doing any sub coming at the moment. But <laughs> so I manage the Google Plus developers relations team, so I work for Google Plus itself. So the product I'd like to promote is Google Plus, but I kind of figure everybody here is already registered to Google Plus, so I'll leave it at that. What's Google Plus? <laughs> <laughs> it's this wonderful social network that Google's working on. Chris, do you have any Google stock to give away? <laughs> no, not at the moment. <laughs> okay, okay, excellent. Uh, who is next? Uh, that is Yvonne. That would be me. Uh, Yvonne Makarov, photographer based out of Bay Area. I'm in San Jose, and I work in Mountain View for Smug Mug. And that's excellent. me. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, actually, I just found out that he went to work at Smug Mug. His background looked all Smug Muggy, and he was wearing a, a <laughs> Smug Mug. I, I'm trying to talk them into changing that uh, that logo with Comic Sans. Come on. They did. They changed it, Ooh. Trey. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not Comic Sans anymore. Oh. It's not, it looks like Comic Sans. Well, the, the face is. It's the little face, but that's it. The, re the text is not anymore. It's Comic Sans-like, isn't it? No, oh, it's a little bit more... Yeah. It's nice now. It's a little bit more Helvetica. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that true. Was a change. Okay. But I was thinking, why don't we give away a hat, not this hat, but a new hat, <laughs> uh, to one of our commenters. All right. Like this one? Good. We yeah. have two giveaways going on. Everyone, join in. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Yvonne. And I Yvonne is here for a very special reason. reason. Uh, we'll find out when we get to the big discussion. So many surprises we're holding back. Okay. Uh, hi, May. Your turn. Hi, can you hear me? I've yeah. been having microphone yeah. problems earlier. Are we good? Yeah, we hear you good. Okay, my name is Jaime Ibarra. I am a photographer and musician and just artist, I guess, all around. I live in Austin, Texas, where Trey lives, and I, I just, I just make art. I make pretty things, and I'm back. I think for my second time on your show, Trey. So thank you. Sure, thank you. I'm always happy to see you. Um, Karen, um, hello. Hello, Trey. How are you? I'm going to talk like this the whole time. Is that okay with you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen Hutton. I, uh, I'm a uh, voiceover professional and a photographer. You can find my uh, voiceover work at KarenHutton.com and my photography at LifeIsLightPhotography.com. I'm the voice of, uh, what is that app? Trey, help me out here. Hmm. Stuck on Saturn. Earth? <laughs> yeah, Stuck on Earth. I'm the voice. Stuck on Earth. Earth. Yeah, a great that? app. Everyone great go get that app. for your iPad. It's free. Free as a bird. Free as a bird, and you'll make friends, and it'll be fantastic. So uh, so that's me. I also host a show called Life Through the Lens, uh, along with Kelly and a bunch of other co-hosts on Google+. 
every other Tuesday, and she has a little more to add to that, which she will do in a minute. I just want to say hi. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Kelly, there she is, right, right by you. Hello, I am Kelly Seeger Kim, and I am a macro photographer and stay-at-home mom. I co-curate Macro Monday with Carrie Murphy and Jennifer Eden on Google Plus, and I am, like Karen said, one of the co-hosts of Life Through the Lens, a bi-weekly show every other Tuesday on Google Plus. The other co-hosts are Tamara Prusner, Carrie Murphy, Tana Teal, Anna Wynn, and Ron Clifford. If you want to see any of my work, you can find it on my Google Plus profile page. And we, we are doing a new thing on that show, a little giveaway, Kelly. What, oh, what is yeah. That? Something. <laughs> something. Yeah. yeah. We're doing a little giveaway. Every show, we're giving away a, another copy of the On One Perfect yes. Week. Yes, because Brian Matish is that awesome, right? Brian yeah. Matish is everywhere you <laughs> want to be. <laughs> <laughs> like a bad rash. <laughs> I have cream for that. <laughs> oh, where to go with that? Oh, straight to you know where. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of creams and ointments, let's say hello to Tony, Tony Wang. <laughs> hello, I'm Tony. Hi, Tony. Um, I'm a producer and editor here at Twit, and um, I produce a photo show here called Twit Photo, and um, that's hosted by. Catherine Hall and Leo Laporte. Cool. Thanks, Tony. And uh, Dave Veffer, my wonderful producer. Hey, Dave. Hello, Trey. Everybody can find me at plusdave.com. Cool. Well, thanks again, Karen, for getting all these wonderful guests in. I'm honored to be uh, among such uh, interesting... <laughs> I didn't have to do anything this week. I just kind of showed up. So th let me let me do a few housekeeping things here before we jump into the discussion about social media and, and all that nonsense. Uh, we have a winner uh, for this uh, giveaway uh, for the Google Plus developers or Google Plus um, photographers conference in San Francisco. Um, the winner uh, from all of those comments is Sly Vegas. <laughs> Sly, super active on Google+. Plus. Um, I met him, like, and I only talked to him for like under 60 seconds um, at a photo walk. Uh, just like so many people that I met at various photo walks. I, I wish I got to talk to people for longer, but it's just it's kind of physically impossible. Mm -hmm. But I hope to have the chance to talk with Sly more um, in San Francisco, and I hope when he signs up, he joins me for my my photo walk. That'll be that'll be great. Which is Tuesday, okay. Tuesday. That Tuesday. That Tuesday. I believe that is the twenty sixth. Is it? Yes, I I'm looking forward to it. I'm flying in from New Zealand just for that event. So that'll be very very exciting. Or maybe it's Monday because I think the conference is Tuesday, Wednesday, and your photo walk is on Monday, I believe. You, you, don't confuse people, Karen. You're confusing people. I can't help it. It's just you're confusing me. Well, it's my gift, and you're welcome. No, you don't have to thank me. <laughs> All right, now here's another thing. Uh, I'm going to share this. So over at, um, where's my browser? Oh, here we go. I'm sharing my screen here. Let me jump over to Stuck in Customs. So, you know, here on the blog, uh, every day I put up a new photo from a different part of the world, and I talk a little bit about it. Um, but sometimes we make changes to the back end to pages that no one ever really sees. So I want to tell you guys about one. Uh, this really won't be of use if you're like a pretty hardcore photographer, but if you're just getting into it, uh, the most common question I get is what camera should I get? Mm. So up here at the top, you can click this button that says stuff you need, okay? And that'll take you over here. And on the stuff you need page, it says you know, what does a man or woman need in life? Food, shelter, and love. It says, okay, I have that. Now I need more. Of course you do. That's why I have all this stuff listed here. And so if you scroll down a little bit, um, I've separated, out of the thousands of cameras out there, I've separated them into good, better, and best. Okay, I happen to have bought uh, for myself the Sony NEX7 and the D800, so... Um, I have more. I have extended reviews on each of these, um, and so this is sort of a big change for me because I had this good, better, and best for previous years, and usually it's been very DSLR heavy. 
And now, as you can see, the good and better cameras are not DSLRs. Uh, the best one is still a DSLR. But this, the nature of this uh, list is changing, and I, I do my best to keep it updated because things change so quickly. All right, so that's that. And let me unscreen share here. And speaking of that Sony NEX7, if you hang on to the end of the show to the bonus time, I'll show several new photos that I've taken from here over the past few days using that Sony NEX7. Um, and you can see some of its capabilities. Uh, some shots are straight out of the camera. Uh, some I've added some Lightroom. Uh, I'll show you what the in-camera HDR looks like. It's kind of hit or miss, but when it hits, it's actually pretty cool. Um, anyway, so that'll be a nice little um, thing at the end. All right, let's let's get into the main topic at hand, uh, uh, social media. So, Karen, I'm going to kind of hand over uh, most of the show here to you because I know you prepared a lot of questions. You invited all these excellent guests, and you've given this a lot of thoughts. So I'll just kind of be another guest, and feel free to ask me anything or or whatever you like. But basically, I'm I'm handing things over to you, and wow. to you, I hand them thusly. Wow, and your hands are not even shaking. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I thought as a way to kick off the evening's discussion, we have Yvonne Makarov here. Now, Yvonne is the mastermind behind... Am I holding it up the right way? Upside no, down. Upside down. <laughs> <laughs> this fantastic book, Plus One Collection, to me is... is at least our first and hopefully not last tangible evidence that social media and artists can make a big change in the world. And Yvonne spearheaded this project and so we wanted to have him talk a little bit more about it and see how it was going, a little update, and he has some news. Yvonne? Sure. And uh, as uh, you might have heard, this book was published about, it seemed like an eternity ago, but it was only a couple of months ago. Uh, and uh, we published this community book uh, as an effort where we said, uh, why don't we get a book together and why don't we publish it and donate the proceeds to a good cause. And uh, this will hopefully make sure that not just the photographers buy the book, but also their families and people who are not in the project and so forth. And, and that turned out to be a, a, there turned out to be a good idea because we had a reach out that went way beyond our little photography community in Google Plus where we had uh, newspapers uh, that were interested in what we were doing. NBC was interested in what we were doing. And just in general, when I look through the sales log uh, to see who bought the book, uh, I can't recognize most of the names because the people that were buying the book were not photographers that were in the book, but someone else whether it was photographers in Google+, Plus or whether it was people outside of Google+, Plus, because we were, um, we were able to reach the masses through uh, publicity we got in the newspapers and on TV. We had quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of other people who, uh, who were interested in the project. And so um, that turned out to be a fun, a fun little publication we did, and we're still uh, making sales now every week, uh, almost every day. We're making sales and raising more money. Thus far, a question I get frequently, how much money have we were able to raise? Um, I don't have the exact number because I still need to sit down and do all the accounting for it. Um, imagine that. It's not uh, the <laughs> funnest part of the project. Mm -hmm. But uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $13,000 is what we've raised so far. And this um, is going to Kiva. Um, this right? is going to Kiva, correct. We just uh -huh. actually mailed our first check to Kiva for $5,000, and we will uh, continue to send them the money during the year as we and keep raising them. And Trey, you, you were the first person that I ever saw Kiva. You were talking about them a long time ago. And they do, what do they do? Uh, well, Kiva's know. great. I started a team. We have a, a team stuck in customs that's competing with Yvonne's team. Great. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I think we got up to about, we're over $15,000 now. But yeah, Kiva, Kiva's great because what it is is, Instead of just donating money to a charity, which is fine and everything, it's it's kind of like uh, eBay for entrepreneurs around the world. You know, that there might be somebody in Bolivia that wants two hundred dollars to expand her potato farm. That's just an example. You know, there might be a guy in Lebanon who wants to raise five hundred dollars so he can expand his motorcycle repair shop. 
Um, I mean, you name it. It's all over the world, just small entrepreneurs. And uh, you can put as little as $20 in, and um, it, everything gets funded very quickly. It's kind of fun to watch it because you can actually watch stuff get – it's like Kickstarter in a way. It was Kickstarter before Kickstarter was cool. And it's a, it's a great way to get money to, uh, you know, to sort of these type A personalities all around the world that are trying hard and trying, you know, not depending on government. They're depending on themselves. They're, they're depending on uh, other uh, type A people like us to support them. And, and I, I think this is the way to go. So I, I think Cuba's great. Yeah. yeah, it's a great organization. I was able to, um, I knew about them for, for a while. And now that we got involved the other day, I decided, well, let's put a loan here out there. And I put a $25 mm -hmm. loan. Uh, to somebody um, in one of those uh, countries, in South, one of the South American countries, let's just say it was Bolivia. And um, a month later, I got an email saying part of the loan was repaid. Um, it was project was fully funded. This guy has a hairdress and so on uh, that he's trying to run, and uh, he paid me back. So it's a great organization that it really enables people to um, go and catch fish themselves rather than we're giving them the fish, if we and use so, the old analogy. Nice. And so beyond the book. You now have uh, something new in this project, yeah. which is very so, encompassing. This project is yeah. Well, give me, let me give you a little bit of a background here. Um, when we uh, started doing the book, uh, besides all these great photographers that came to me and said, "Hey, we want to help with photography or with book creation and so forth," there were also other people that came out and were very helpful in the sense that they identified all the risks of doing a project like this. One of the risks was uh, taxes. They said, well, you, you need to really figure it out because you don't want IRS to send you the bill later uh, for all the money that you've collected uh, as, as an income to you. Even if you're donated, it's still an income. And I said, well, okay, let me think about this. And so what we went and, uh, to, what we went and did to protect this, we actually formed a nonprofit organization, a charity. Um, and, well, not charity, but in a sense, nonprofit organization, and we're now in the middle of applying for exam status, so uh, this way uh, it's guaranteed that whatever uh, money we collect will not be taxed by the IRS. So uh, part of that is actually means that we have to keep uh, doing these kinds of projects so we have an active organization. And we thought, well, what else we can do? Let's think about this. Obviously, we can do a book, but that's more of a once a year thing. And now that we've done one, we can streamline a lot of it. And, and when we do another one, it won't take long. Uh, what's something else we can do? And uh, the idea that was there to, well, why don't we throw a charity, um, uh, so throw, sorry, why don't we throw a magazine together? So a bit of an offshoot from uh, what we're doing uh, with the book, but in the form of a magazine where we could have articles, we could have photo essays, and so forth. And um, um, this idea was born to create a, a, a plus one magazine, and we're just starting to get going with it. Uh, I keep getting emails from our designer, who, who you know, who designed the book, Andy Lee, who says, hey, really anxious to get started. And I said, uh, okay, well, let's get it done. And so this month, the, probably in the next two, three weeks, we'll, we'll spend organizing the material, contacting photographers, contacting people who can write articles and so forth. And we'll have our first community Google Plus magazine. How's That's that, Chris? That's fantastic. How, and that is probably, very cool. You said it. It's weekly. It's monthly. Say it one more time. Um, it, well, we don't know how often it's going to be, but uh, uh, perhaps quarterly or something is what we're thinking about right now. And it has a web. There's a website, or there will be. A website? Um, we don't have a website yet. Uh, we'll set it up probably as part of the plus one collection dot com somewhere somewhere so there. Is this a, a real magazine or is this an online magazine? It will be both. Um, I I'm an old fashioned guy who likes to collect books and magazines and so forth. And so um, I want to produce something that can be printed because I think there's something about photography, the way it's appearing in print. Um, but we'll also obviously have an e-book uh, or e-version of the magazine that people can purchase that people that live far away or they don't want to pay for printing costs and so forth. Um, so uh, we'll have both versions. That is very, very cool. And that is a perfect lead-in to my first question for everybody. And one of the reasons why I wanted to gather this particular group, because I'm curious, from all of your points of view who are here, what do you think the single most, if you can boil it down to a single most, um, most important change or opportunity that you have seen, um, or the, ro the opportunity, role, or change that you've seen social media provide for artists? And we can start with Brian. 
we could just go one way and then the other way. <laughs> and you, well, I was actually just talking to Nicole, so I want to know if you can repeat that. Yep. <laughs> I heard my name. I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> I knew that. Welcome just back. Make sure nobody's nodding off. So and I'm talking about uh, having a side chair. Are, are we back now? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> so the question is, what do you think the single most, or if there's a couple most, um, important either opportunities, changes, or roles that social media plays uh, in the lives of artists at this point, like to date? I mean, it, it, without a doubt, uh, social media gave it gave the, a forum for anyone who uh, was willing to kind of uh, take advantage of it, uh, especially early on, to build their own brand and uh, make an identity for themselves, where previously it would have been significantly harder, the barrier to entry would have been uh, much greater. So with social media, uh, as long as you couple um, a, a unique brand, uh, high quality art, product, whatever it is, and then consistency in that, um, I find that you have people, everyone here is a product for the most part of the utilizing social media uh, to a positive uh, way. And again, the plus one book um, was a, a sterling example of that. You know, it, it was of the people, by the people, for the people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of people are, are out there just trying to figure out what... We know that social media is here. It's, it's this ocean that everyone kind of can cast their own ripples or their own waves, and people are just trying to figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, still, still, so... Yeah. Chris? So, well, you knew when you invited me, I was going to have a lot of long stories because this is kind of my cup of tea, right? I this know, is where that's I, I my eyes light up and I go, "Oh my <laughs> God, this is awesome!" Uh, but uh, but I'll start with a small one. Uh, one of my favorite stories, most inspiring stories, still is a, a director who won the Cannes Film Festival a couple of years ago. And in itself, that's nothing unique. But this was a 14-year-old boy who lived in the Czech Republic. So that's relatively unique because usually you have to live in Hollywood. You need to know the right people. You need to have really expensive equipment and have access to tens of thousands of dollars, really expensive equipment to be able to make a movie that actually wins an award, right? Mm -hmm. That was clearly not the case here. So what this kid did instead was he had an iPhone and he had a YouTube account. He thought it would be fun to make a movie. He uploaded it to YouTube. There were a bunch of people there who kind of saw something interesting in it. He got inspired to make the next movie and talking to his audience and refining his art constantly, he became this really amazing storyteller with nothing but an iPhone and a YouTube account. At 14. Well, that's for, at 14. He started at like 12. Uh, and the thing that inspires me endlessly about that story is that like I said, normally you would have to live near Hollywood and your dad would have to be some rich guy. And this completely broke open the way that people can learn their craft, the way they can find an audience, the way they can refine their skills. And we're seeing that on Google Plus every day as well, where people are getting inspired because they see somebody's image and they go, wow, I want to be able to I want to be able to make that. And then they talk to the person who made that image, they get some suggestions, they go out and practice, their audience likes it as well. And you've got this magic happening where suddenly people are developing skills they never would have before unless they went to like an official school or they knew the right people. So for me, the key takeaway is the biggest change in social media for artists is that everybody can be an artist now. You don't need to have the right, the right tools or money or anything else. Everybody can become whatever they're meant to become and what they're passionate about. Now, that's a pretty that. big change. And actually. it's not just photographers either because we're seeing singers and musicians and mm -hmm. writers. Just, and just look at Daria Musk, for instance. She's one of my favorite Google Plus stories where she was playing for like 10 people in a shady bar and she was dragging her equipment all over, paying her dues, hoping to someday make it as an artist, right? And then Google Plus came around. She got invited. She saw Hangouts and she went, hey, wait a minute. There's some magic here. There's some potential here. She organized this concert, and she had a few people in the room, and there was 10 people in the hangout. Then a about an hour in, one person left, and another person came in, and that person said, there's hundreds of people waiting to see what you're doing. 
She, she had no idea because she was playing in a hangout. She, she wasn't looking to what was happening on Google Plus, right? So that night she played like 12 hours in a row and people kept cycling in and <laughs> she's kind of a big deal on Google Plus. And it's just one of those stories where you go, the impossible now has become common day normalcy. And that's pretty inspiring. Yeah. You bring up and a good point, though, yeah. I, I just, with that, Chris, because um, it's not the artist is, you know, the, the, an artist, you know, the, maybe the social media aspect helps an artist kind of find their muse and, and also obviously helps them share. But all these examples that you give uh, illustrate the artist not only being a, a creative, but also as someone who's very um, not aggressive, but um, uh, kind of like Trace, uh, to a degree, a type A personality because they they have the tools. We all have ready access to these tools. We're all here. Everyone's watching us. We're, we're, we have Google+, Plus, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have everything. Um, it's the people who uh, not only take that the, the art, that craft, and share it, but also really kind of um, uh, attack it and... and, and Again, you know, like uh, going out and sharing and constantly building that brand, that's where you see these success stories too. And, and I think you illustrate that uh, really nicely with the YouTube uh, channel. So, um, yeah. And that's kind of true nowadays, right? I mean, on the one hand, finding an audience is easier than ever because you don't need to own a printing press or a broadcasting tower or a movie cinema to be able to reach an audience. The audience is already out there and as long as you create something that people like, the audience will find you and you can engage with them and keep growing that audience. Absolutely. On the other hand, I think that also means that marketing has become slightly more important than it was maybe back in the day when other people did that marketing for you. Because you do need to go out there, you do need to make sure that people can see your work. So that's definitely a critical component of it. Agreed. Absolutely. And there's enough people, I mean, I, I know a few photographers who are amazing photographers, but they're unfortunately not making as much as a living as I, as I wish they would because they do create amazing mm -hmm. art. Uh, and the thing that's often holding them back is that they don't have that marketing sense. And they don't have somebody who contributes the marketing sense to them, right? So art in itself isn't enough to make a living, I guess. You need to be able to Make sure that people pay for it as well. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Yvonne, do you want to add to this, or do you feel like you've said your piece with the... I'll, I'll add a little... Uh, something I've learned in the last few months while uh, doing this fundraising for Plus One Collection. I've done a couple other small fundraising. I actually started one today for a friend of ours who has uh, a rare disease, cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it on my page. Um, I'm just blown away by how generous the photography community is. Um, just when we started doing the book, uh, it's not just the people who are uh, willing to give us licenses to their photos for publication of the book, um, but it's also how many of them actually paid the high price to buy the book or had their family pay or um, how many people are just, just willing to share to help a good cause. Um, that's been, um, that's been a, a really marvelous discovery for me because um, I think as, as much as we enjoy company uh, of each other on social networks or in Google Hangouts and so forth, it's still not as personal as, as meeting people in real life. But, uh, but I think in the last, uh, the last 12 months or so, we, we've made it a great strides to be closer as a community. And uh, we see things like this happen. Um, just, just to give you a very simple example, um, um, I have here uh, uh, two big prints. I should probably show it to you guys. Oh. <laughs> Rock star. <I> think. <laughs> By uh, Patrick Smith, who is uh, oh, wow. one of the better known photographers on Google Plus. Um, I have it in a bag. Um, so I just emailed him talking about my fundraiser, and he responded and said, Hey, I have a couple of prints I can donate to you that you can auction off. Nice. So, That's beautiful. Uh, giant prints, very nicely custom framed, and he just dropped them off today. Um, at my place and said you can amazing. use it. So for me, this kind of a response is just nothing short of amazing. Uh, I think social networks and especially ability to communicate in person like we are right now may need the whole experience a lot more personal. I think Hangouts has changed the game mm -hmm. in so many ways. Definitely. Yeah. Jaime? What? What do you <laughs> think there, son? <laughs> How are you doing? Good.
I mean, I'm just I'm always like the quiet guy in the back of the class of these things because <laughs> uh, sorry, it's not it's not because I don't want to talk. Just, well, know. you have had huge success with social media, and so this question of what you know, what do you think the most important change or opportunity or role that social me media has played in your success and in and in audiences finding your work, which is very unique. I mean, I can I can speak in um, both from a photography point of view, and I can also speak as a musician as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I still, I swear, I pinch myself every day when I wake up. This is amazing. You know, like I've, I've, I've been able to ditch uh, record labels. I don't need my record label support to do the new CD I've been working on. That is tremendous. Just that alone is like, that to me says everything I need to say. Um, I'm not reliant on anybody really anymore like you know you and 10 you know 15 years ago if you're a, if you're a, uh, a musician you need that record level because you need their distribution channels you need their marketing channels um, you don't <laughs> you don't need those anymore um, and as far as photography is concerned um, I'm uh, 2006, just to tell you, like I don't think anybody knew who I was. I was just, I was pretty much a, a, a relative obscurity, and thanks to a few different um, social networking sites, um, it just exploded. And I'm still, I'm just gobsmacked when I when I look at the reality of that. So you're really, like you're really active on Google Plus, but you have art on on uh, Deviant Art that's had like two million hits. Or yeah, something like this. yeah, Deviant Art's been huge for me. Um, I just I I'm I'm a newcomer to Google Plus, admittedly, and you know it's uh, it's something that I want to find more time to to delve into because I could see it's a it's a it's just as amazing a tool. I just haven't had the, like time to get in and 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 experiment with it but you know like DeviantArt and there's like 500px.com and I mean there, there's so many awesome 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 social networking sites for photographers out there and it's I don't know it's just it's just done it's done so much for me it's I guess I think a few other people have said already today when you when you're getting that real-time feedback from the people that that are following your work like as an artist it kind of helps you 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 can you kind of custom tailor your art a little bit because now you know what people are wanting to see. Mm -hmm. And you know, most artists will go, "No, I don't care what anybody wants, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna shoot. I'm just gonna do what I do for me." And that's bull pucky. You're like, that's not true. Like, if you, if I, I think that with your, the feedback of, of the people that admire your work and the people that follow you and support you, you're creating you're creating something that not only appeals more to them, but I think that that. You're creating art, or you know, like music, photography, whatever that has more of a of a universal appeal. If you let your if you let the people that are following you on these sites, you know, act as sort of representative of, of other people in the world. Because I think you have uh, like a deviant art. There's there's a, such a wide demographic of artists on there. There's, there's kids. I mean, there's twelve year old kids, and and up, like way up. And and so I mean, you're hearing from so many different people from so many different parts of the planet, and uh, ultimately, that can only be a good thing, you know. And I don't know. It's just um, I'm, I'm like I said, I, I pinch myself every day. <laughs> yeah. Like one of the sorry for interrupting, Carbo. Oh, cool. One of the stories he reminded me of is like Instagram, who that's kind of the big buzz in the valley right now. They sold for a billion dollars, which is quite of an impressive amount. Uh, and the thing that I always found made Instagram a magical kind of environment is that they pick up the phone, they take a picture, they apply a cool filter to it, and it's kind of art. Uh, I put air quotes in it because it's their first picture, and the first picture is always not your best picture ever, right? But then they upload it, they get s some comments and some likes, and then they go to see the popular pictures, and they go, they kind of learn what is cool within Instagram, and as they keep going through their process, they keep seeing, well, this is what resonates with this community. They've got all these live examples of what works in that environment. They keep honing their own skills, and before you know it, they become an artist within that community as well. And the VNR is kind of the same thing in Google Plus as well, where 
people aren't just picking up a camera, they're instantly an artist, but because of that feedback loop, because you have the examples of what works and what makes really good art and what resonates with your audience, and you constantly push stuff out there where you get the reward every time you improve a little bit, people really get pushed to really refine their art, and I think that's kind of a magic thing that you were talking about as well, that having that audience, having that loop, being able to fine tune to your audience, Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the big deals with social media as well. And, yeah. and, and also for me too, in that, uh, it also, I don't want to be, I don't want my, anything that I do, music or photography or any, I don't want it to be like everybody else. So mm -hmm. like in that same, in that same path of, of okay, here's what people want to see, I'm also looking at so much other work that other people are producing, and it tells me, okay, I don't want to get too close to that. I don't want to get too close to this way. It lets me stay on my unique path as much as possible, anyway. So I can, it kind of, I can fine, like fine tune, and I can chisel, like mm -hmm. my my own. I think I'm making up a word, uniquity, my own uniqueosity. I just, I just <laughs> very, it's very important to me to keep that. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, feel free to use those words. I like it. You know, tend to, I, I yes. tend to use I am a lot use of them. lawn like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I make up words sometimes, especially when I'm shooting. I've, I've invented such things as swoopy. I've, I've told a model, just can you kind of, when you do stand, like kind of swoopy? <laughs> that that still gets I'm reminded of that one every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really it's really it's it's it. I'm not saying anything, and no one's had this hint already. It, it puts my work is being seen by so many people, yeah. and it's it's only getting better. And it's 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 taught me a lot about me, first I mean personally about my art and what I do, and and uh, ultimately it's just. Uh, it's just I don't even know. It's like it's so it's so powerful. I almost don't know what to say. I just kind of like just stand there going, uh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. it's big. It's a game changer. It totally is. Yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, Kelly, you were you're new. You're new at photography. You're new to social media. You're just you're just new. But mm -hmm. you've made a splash as a result of all this. I did. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, second or third or fourth, the, the comments that have been made already uh, as far as exposure goes, clearly uh, it, it's a really quick path to um, uh, exposure, having your images, you know, reach um, a wide audience. Uh, also, the thing that it's been really big for me is just the education portion, which Chris has mentioned, you know, a few times, and and that is that's the only reason I'm sitting here is is mm -hmm. the education uh, portion. If I didn't have that, it, people um, that I've connected with, you know, because uh, I posted something or I just posted a comment on somebody else's picture, and now the relationship starts to build, and now uh, you know all of a sudden duh, I've got somebody here that's willing to help me and, and, and give me advice now and then and, and it's not some, you know, random, hey, your picture sucks, you know, what are you thinking? And, you know, <clears throat> everybody gets those, but <clears throat> Google also has a wonderful block feature, but um, <laughs> so you, the education thing is big because that's the biggest thing for me is that and then, and then of course now the exposure and the networking portion is, is well, pretty big. Trey, I don't, do you want to chime in on this, Trey? Because I have a question that you might want to chime in on. But do you want to do you want to say something about this before I ask this next one? Because they made me think of this next one. No, no, you can jump to the next one. Um, so, and this is one that comes up periodically. So, how much do you think? Okay, so we get all this feedback, and everybody says, "Oh, we love that," and you start developing an audience, and you start figuring out what your audience likes, and so on and so forth. Um, so then, how much? How how able are you to stick with your art? How much do you start producing for an audience versus producing art for yourself? And and like where do you draw those lines? Uh, well, it's a very interesting question. I've never had a problem producing art that I love and is meaningful to me. And I think it's it's wonderful that there's a lot of people out there that can enjoy it and then it adds to their life and gives them ideas or inspiration or whatever. 
So that's that's great. Although I do know a lot of people do struggle with this idea of oh, I should make something that that, that people like, or I should find a balance between what I like and what other people like. And I've been having this conversation a lot with Tom recently. Because Tom, you know, he's he's very interested in the sociological phenomenon of of, uh, of sharing and being online and people's reaction to various stimuli. You know, I think he sees the internet as this this, uh, this giant uh, thought experiment, you know, this huge, you know, Pavlov's dog type thing. And he's always perplexed and vexed at the kind of reactions that his various photos get. And, you know, he, he thinks personally, and I've told him this, he won't mind me saying, he thinks too much about people's reaction. He's, he's very, very curious about people's reactions. I notice people's reactions, but it's just sort of like rain on an umbrella. Uh, I don't get, you know, wet, but I, I notice that it's there. Uh, the same thing goes with good and bad comments. Um, and I've been sharing online for, you know, five years now, so I'm just really, really used to it. Um, and also, let me, let me speak uh, just about another topic that's related to this, and I know a lot of, a lot of photographers, um, mostly it's just photographers, they get upset with simple one-word comments like, wow, or cool, or amazing. Um, but uh, here's, here's my defense of those, of those comments and the people that make them. Um, I've always thought that photographers should, their main audience should be outside of photography. Uh, photographers spend way too long trying to impress other photographers. And I know that, you know, when you're getting started or if you're really craving the uh, multi-sentence polysyllabic feedback of your peers, uh, you know, that's, that's okay if you really want that. Um, but really, you know, your audience is outside of your peers. Your audience is people that don't even understand photography. And think about what it's like when you, a photographer, are watching a discipline that you don't understand. Like a good example is like let's say you're watching Olympic diving and some little you know 97 pound South Korean does 20 flips and dives in and there's no splash. Well, you might be sitting there by your friend and you would say, "Wow, you know what do you say? You you have no knowledge of the techniques needed to to perform that or you don't know anything about her training or or what went into it. You just you don't even know. So you just kind of come up with these." these words where you're just aghast at something that uh, impresses you. You don't have any, uh, you know, uh, worthwhile verbiage to wrap around that, to give, you know, some sort of uh, uh, elitist uh, feedback. Uh, so, so anyway, um, you're going to get all kinds of comments, uh, good and bad. You'll get critiques from morons. Uh, you'll get hate from people that don't understand uh, why you do what you do. A lot of times the, the hate is people just trying to steer you back in line with what is mainstream, what is acceptable so that you might be judged fairly by a team of your peers. Ignore that nonsense. Uh, notice it. Or you can pay attention to it. You don't have to be oblivious and aloof to it all. You can just sort of notice it, right? Like meteors that bounce off the atmosphere of your planet. You see them. But you can just ignore them Find what's interesting to you. If you think it's pretty and interesting, even if you're not sure what you totally think of it, if it's interesting, just share it out there with the world. It's your duty as an artist to share it and just kind of notice the feedback and let it just sort of feed your mojo and keep the cycle going forward. Trey, and I think this is, uh, I've been talking to somebody about this last week. Uh, the way the Internet has changed for photographers in the last 12 to 24 months is the fact that you're not just now sharing pictures with um, uh, with photographers, but actually your audience is largely non-photographers uh, because you look at who who are liking pictures on Google Plus, who are adding us on Google Plus, and not just in Google Plus on other no, on networks as well because people are now finally using these products like Facebook for pictures or Flickr or whatever, um, and so it's really changed. Um, and you kind of have to uh, keep that in mind and, and appreciate that. Yeah, I really appreciate all the photographers that were so nice to me when I 
first came onto Google Plus, and I didn't have any pictures to post. I wasn't a photographer. I mean, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But uh, all, sometimes all I had to say was cool. But most of the time, you know, whatever comment I left was how the, the image made me feel. How, you know, how awesome it was. Oh, my gosh, I love, you know, that <laughs> little thingy there. And that looks like a bug. Or, ah! You know, and, and photographers are really sweet about it. And the ones that weren't, you know, I stopped commenting on their stuff. And it, it's also, I mean, the lowest amount of appreciation somebody could give you is not interacting at all. Then the next step up from there of, hey, I actually noticed your work enough. Uh, I'll plus one it or like it or whatever network you're using. If they actually go out of their way to be a vocal minority that says, wow, this image moved me, they really went out of their way because for every comment you get, there's thousands of people who never bothered. So from that perspective, I love any comment I get because, hey, you cared enough to leave that comment. Yeah, but there's a, there's a very, very, very fine line there. And uh, I have my little anecdote. And it, it kind of goes to what Jaime was saying about, you know, Jaime it has a very healthy attitude, and I respect it a lot. That, you know, he has his own definition of what his art is, what, he, what it appeals to him. Now, there was, I was talking with a, a good friend of mine who's a photographer, here in G Plus, and I remember he um, he asked me, "Oh, hey, did you see my shot today?" And I said, uh, "No, I didn't." And so I uh, I went over there to his shot, and I said, "Oh, yeah, that's cool." And he's like, "Yeah," his, his response was something like, "Yeah, it's doing okay on Google." And I thought that was such a a, a telling response. Like, it, so what is exactly it, 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 that to me? If that is the case, that you're basing the success or how much you like a shot or how good it is based on the number of plus ones or comments or uh, whether it makes it to what's hot or any other arbitrary, uh, you know, statistic. That to me is a very, very dangerous place for especially new photographers to go to because um, it stifles. It stifles and it's like, oh man, if I don't get comments, maybe I'm just, you know, a crap photographer. <laughs> um, sad, sad state of affairs um, that, that that we need to really be very, very careful about. Um, uh, you need to. F I was with with Jay Patel this weekend, and he said, he said to me, "I know I'm an awesome photographer," and I I was like, "That is a really there's a, a also a line there crossing with uh, being truly uh, egotistical to the point where you know you don't need feedback. Or everyone has room to grow, but believing in yourself, believing that you know." I could put it shot up, and if it doesn't get anything, that's great. I put it out there to put it out there. That's the, 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 my, my motivation. I want to share it. Only bad photos, ones that's not shared. So um, it's, you know, a lot of good points are made here, but I really, really resonate with, um, with Jaime that uh, it's my art, you know, and Trey, you know, God, if anyone here has, uh, has kind of uh, been lambasted over just doing what they think they like, um, so... It, it, keep it real. It's really, it's really. Yeah. Real. And I got it. I just wanted to, to chime in too. Like for a lot of a lot of photographers, like the new newer people, uh, that they will take a negative comment and they just let it just like it eviscerates them sometimes. And all I have to say to that is like something my father used to tell me. He says it's it is the empty truck that makes the most noise. <laughs> think about, ah, think wow. about that, you know, and it's true. And I think it's I think it's just people. I think in a way, even that's a compliment because you're making people go. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I, I used to judge how how good somebody else's photo was by how I'm mean, I'm just in a relative sense like how jealous it made me. I would look at a photo and go, oh, I wish I took that. I wish I took that. It's like, but now I look at that as a, I celebrate that photo. And I was like, mm, you know, that, that's so good. I wish I did it. I wish I did it. So good on you, you know. But, yeah, you just have to, yeah, you, you do have to kind of grow a slightly thicker skin, I think, especially when you put your work out in front of, out there in front of this many people that we're talking about. Yeah. It's a huge I, I, audience. I think it's kind of both true. I mean, uh, maybe I'm the most junior photographer. I mean, I've been shooting for, what, a year and a half, I think, now. Uh, mm. And half of the, uh, And you, absolutely. <laughs> High five. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
A lot of times I don't know if a good image is a good image until I put it out there because it's one of those you don't see the forest through the trees kind of situation. Uh, I just don't feel experienced enough yet to be able to step back and say, ah, yes, that is it. I, I'm just not at that point yet. Sometimes I need to throw some mud against the wall and see if it will stick. Uh, I need that outside perspective to be able to analyze the work that I've done. And then I see some of the comments and I go, wow, I had no idea you would see that in there. I kind of felt it. I, I was just not conscious of it. There's, okay. So, so, so in that regard, I mean, I, I do like that interaction and it does have value. Uh, I've also got a negative comments and, you know, I just think of them as poopy heads and the term <laughs> alone already kind of makes them not take them seriously. <laughs> I mean, the, the, here's the thing, and this, I can't, I cannot stress this enough, and I, it's a topic that, you know, RC and I are even talking offline, and, and it's very, very uh, near and dear to me. Find a mentor. Find so if there. There's too much static. There's t positive, negative comments, plus ones, all this sharing and stuff. It's great. It's great, but it's ultimately static. And what you need to do is you find someone who you trust, who has the time, because you don't want to find a mentor who's just kind of uh, blowing smoke, um, and you confide in them and let them tear you apart. Um, and that's one of the ways that you grow is through mentorships. And I see Ron Clifford, uh, you know, with the mentor program that, that both you guys, you ladies here, Karen and Kelly, can talk about. Um, it's critical. That, to me, for me, I, I had a mentor. And, I, and it's not about name drop. It's not about this. But I was, I was fortunate in my job now that I have access to people who are amazing photographers and I confided in one, and he became a mentor. And my work, um, I, I, can, I feel comfortable to say, has, has grown uh, by an order of magnitude. Um, and so that's what I think people should be focusing on as their uh, one of their primary growth channels is the is a mentor or a few. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for Chris. Um, Chris. Because yes, <laughs> you are such a social media evangelist, as it were, what what do you hope? I mean, we know that it's that it's really accelerated and it's done all these amazing things to date. What mm -hmm. do, what do you hope for for the future? If you could design, you know, a change or or envision the the defined direction that this could all go, what what do you hope for the future? Oh, no, yeah. that is an overloaded question with so many answers. I know, uh, so to pick, pick a piece. Uh, I, I, I'm going to reply with a small story again. I hope you humor me. Like uh, One of the stories that, as an engineer, fascinates me is how the space shuttle and the horses behind are related to each other. And it turns out that the first roads in the world were built by the Romans, and the Romans had a cart pulled by two horses, so that's how wide the cart was. So when people in the future build cars and trains and trams and all that jazz, the existing roads were exactly two horses' asses wide, so that's how they build everything else as well. So by the time we got to the space shuttle a few thousand years later, they had to use the railroad track, which was based on the old roads, which was based on the old horse, horse and carriages of the Romans who had two horses behind, behind the carriage. So there's a direct correlation between such incredibly old standards and modern things like the space shuttle. So these kind of standards permeate through history, and we kind of take them for granted without ever thinking about them. That's, so that's kind of the point I'm trying to make with the story is that there's a lot of things we accept as reality just because they've always been that way. That doesn't mean they're necessarily the best thing or what will be in the future, right? So with that lesson in mind, one of the comparisons you can make is like democracy. Democracy in the election system is completely based on the fact that you have to put a guy in a horse and you set him to a city far away, and we, he would have to travel for weeks or months on end to get to the capital and then represent your state or city or country. A and that system had to work because if every time people had to travel for weeks to make a choice on something that needed to be acted on now, a country will be paralyzed. So the entire democratic system is based on the assumption that it takes weeks for a message to go between cities. Nowadays we have the internet and that's not true anymore. So the basic four-year election cycles, the basic we have somebody representing us in a faraway city, 
they don't necessarily have to hold true. And I don't know what the replacement of it is going to be in the future. Uh, I just know that just the basic assumption was that the best way to get news was printed on paper. Now that's slow, that's expensive, it washes away in the rain, and it, it, you have to get it in the morning and it's already a day old news. We have better solutions for that now. Uh, the best way to talk to each other, the best way to communicate over long distances, they've all changed majorly. Uh, and I think we've only seen the beginning of how those basic assumptions are going to change. So, uh, I think this future is going to look very different from how it looks now. Yeah, I think so too. I also, I mean, I have to chime in here with, um, y you know, everything that you guys are saying. But we're sitting here on a hangout. And mm -hmm. I work in the broadcast industry, have for many, many years when I was an actor, you know, in front of the camera and as a voice, you know, professional. And now we're doing these hangouts. And um, it was it Brian, I think, was talking earlier about if you, you know, we all have these capabilities at our fingertips. So who's going to be type A enough to, you know, to grab it and go do something with it? So in my tiny little mind, I'm watching all this hangout and, you know, Twit TV and all this stuff developing going, wow, broadcast industry ought to be as scared as it is right now because mm -hmm. it is. <laughs> they, are, they are pretty much running scared. And, uh, and I'm just curious, as an artist, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but as an artist with this developing, you know, social media thing that we're all involved in, how important or what role or how excited are you or how do you see the visual medium playing into the future of artists and social media and, and our success and our development. Because Can I prelude that with uh, one other observation? Yeah. I think one of the interesting changes is that as we're moving through time, in the beginning we lived in tribes and then we lived in cities and then we got all these great solutions to reach a lot of people at the same time because you can't talk to a million people at the same time, right? So we got broadcasting towers and newspapers and television stations and all that jazz. But that was a one-to-many form of conversation. I would write something and then I would broadcast it over the television to millions of people who couldn't talk back to me. They couldn't have a connection with me. They mm. didn't see me as a human being. I was just a brand on the TV that you can't talk back to. So if anything is the major change with social media is that everybody can talk with everybody now, real time, without needing to own a television. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the big things where a lot of the artists on the show tonight, if you look at Trey, etc., they're really good in understanding that it's now about building social relationships with other human beings. Right. It's not about saying, here's a message and you can't change it or reply to it. And that is completely different. Yeah. I think there's kind of a human re revolution that's rebelling against being lied to and being information being withheld and everything being hidden. Mm -hmm. now it's yeah, it, it was controlled, and now it's kind of up to us again. Yeah. That's a big change. Very exciting. What's our time? Oh, we're good. We're sailing. I love this. <laughs> um, Brian, what, yep. do you think about, what do you think about art competitions? I think they're very healthy. I mean, as long as it's a legitimate art competition and the judges, um, you know, know a thing or two about photography and competition judging, um, I think it's healthy. It's definitely one of the um, ways that I've, I've seen, like, lists on how to improve your game. Um, one of them is always enter competitions. Um, so I, I'm a fan of it. I, I haven't really entered any competitions, uh, not, not because... I, you, you say competition, everyone starts going up in arms about, you know, uh, terms of use of images and this and that and the other thing. Um, I just haven't, just because I, I haven't had much time to, but um, I think it's awesome. I think it's uh, a lot of fun to, to try. Um, I'll give a big shout out also to, you know, the, the scavenger hunt by Chris DeRay. That, um, that is a kind of a, another of the people by the people for the people competition on a massive scale that, um, people are trying to just kind of uh, think outside of the box and um, if you don't challenge it, okay fine, if you don't challenge yourself just to go out and do something that you haven't done before, let the competition itself, the, the body of the competition uh, challenge you. Um, mm -hmm. One way or the other, you have to kind of uh, move forward. You know, shooting the same thing over and over, um, it'll, it'll get you good for a while, but um, personally, from, from for yourself, you'll want to kind of evolve. Yeah. Jaime, what do you think about competition? 
I'm not a competitive person, but that doesn't mean competition is a bad thing, you know. Like I'm, I, I guess in the spirit of bringing bringing people together, that then, then it's good. But I don't think, I don't, I don't know. Just for me, I just, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into the notion of you know, my my art is better than that person's art or that. And I, don't, I think a lot of the competitions that that I see though aren't really of that nature. They're just about you know unifying. Uh, artists to you know get involved and, and just makes them more makes them more proactive in their art. But I personally, I'm not a competitive person. Like I don't I don't like sports ever. I've never played sports. I was the kid who stayed in his room and played guitar and, and painted stuff, but never. The only sport I ever played was tennis. But I did that, and this is relevant because I didn't do it to to beat my friend on the court. I did it to hang out with my friend on the court. Matter of fact. I've, lo- I've played tennis almost every day with the same guy who always beat me. I've never won against him. And for two years, I played with him. So there, therein is my answer to that question, if this makes any sense. I, I, loved, I loved that we were playing the game, but it wasn't for me to win. I think, and, and isn't, isn't there some crossover here somewhere? Oh, you know, I, you, perfect. I mean, Oh, good. Okay. No, it is just my opinion, but you, you illustrated it really well with, with the analogy to tennis where that's the thing, Karen, about competitions that I see a lot. Is people, people bleed animosity into it. It's not fun. It's ugly. It's, a, it's competition in like a, an ugly way. Like, oh. yeah. and, and whereas we're cont- – I see everyone here as a contemporary, and, um, you know, I don't think I'll – Ever strive to um, to reach Jaime's caliber of work just because it, it's on, it's on a different plane that I that I currently think the way I currently see. However, um, and if I lost to him in competition for whatever reason, I would be um, thrilled because the the art that he puts out is fantastic. And as an artist, as a photographer, that's what I'm looking for is is amazing art. When, I don't care who it's from. If it's from me, even better. But um, I just want to see good stuff. Um, and that that's ultimately what, what I think. I mean, tell me if I'm kind of paraphrasing incorrectly, but I think a lot, what we see a lot of is this kind of ugliness, uh, even if it's coated in a little bit of saccharin, it's... Um, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I, was saying, I was saying, yeah, I totally agree with you. And I just I couldn't put it into those words, but thank you for doing that. Cause <laughs> that's basically what I what I was trying to get at. I I got you. I got Competition you. can be a healthy thing in a in a community sense. Like like my, my friend that beat my butt every day on the tennis court, and he knew he was going to win, and I knew I was going to lose. But <laughs> still, every day, even in the rain, a couple of times I remember. And I, for, I don't know. For me, for example, that is was one of the hardest thing when we were putting a book together was the fact that we had to exclude certain images from the print book because we just didn't have enough space. We're going to run into the same problem with a magazine where we can't publish every image that's going to be submitted, so we're going to have to make a selection, and you upset people. Uh, and so that kind of almost goes against the whole spirit of community. Um, and so uh, that that can be a problem, and I think that's that's generally the the spirit of any competition. Even if you have a hundred winners, and you had a thousand entries, you still upset ninety percent of your community mm. by telling them that their work is not good enough. Even though that's not what you meant, no matter what the selection process is, that's not what you never mean. You just have to make a selection, and it based on all kinds of factors. But that's how people take it, and that's why I, I personally uh, try not to enter any competitions and 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 all that because uh, th- that's th- that's just th- that's just some of the indirect message you may get you may think about your own work. Exactly. Hmm. But keep in mind, I mean, we are fueled by motivation, uh, and one form of motivation is friendly competition. And uh, of course, negative competition never pull people ahead. But going, oh, I wish I could do better than you next time. That's okay. That fuels us, that motivates us. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. What, everybody, has surprised you the most about social media and your involvement and artists? I know we've talked about a lot of things that surprised us, but the expectation, you know, was that 
things would grow and we'd have more exposure and so on and so forth. I should make this a two-parter. What has surprised you the most? What has disappointed you the most? And anybody can chime in. I, I have one. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a unique to me thing, I think. I don't, I don't know anybody else that has a story like that. Hopefully there are some other people, but sparing a lot of the ugly details, I, mean, I was at rock bottom. I was starving. I had no work. I mean, I, I, was, I, I, had lost, I had lost about 35 pounds of weight. Imagine imagine this this frame. I'm like one one seventy five right now. Imagine me thirty, thirty five pounds lighter. That's that wasn't that for choice. That was just because I couldn't afford food. It was that bad. And uh, my following on Deviant Art came together and they raised money for me and brought me back back to life again. And it was, you know, thanks wow. to them. Um, uh, that I'm back in Austin, Texas again, and I'm happy, and I'm not starving, and and that thing just just you know, I don't know if you, I've never really been moved to tears by someone's actions, but that was definitely one thing I will never forget ever, and and people raising money just for a person they don't even know. I mean, they know my work, you know, and I do I do write journal entries and stuff, and I'm. I'm pretty I'm pretty open with my life and and I don't have any big big secrets or anything but they don't know me and just that 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 thing that happened I just I will I will always talk about how how amazing that was and I don't mean to get away from hopefully it's answering the question but no, in, totally in my is. world that was the thing that was all oh, that just touched me like I can't even describe it's just ineffable you know that was amazing absolutely Incredible. amazing uh, and I love that we're seeing a lot of those kind of things happening in Google Plus as well. Mm -hmm. Like Corey Finsk, you know, she's a girl with MS, she's bedridden. Uh, and people started doing like hangout photo walks. They put their cell phone on their camera and she could see mm -hmm. other cities and beaches and the world around her through other people's photo walks. And I thought it was so touching. Uh, she had some problem with her medicine recently. So what people did was they took turns to watch her sleep because there's a risk she could stop breathing in her sleep. Mm -hmm. So she had all these people lined up in the hangouts, making sure that she was still doing okay and they could dial 911 if something did go wrong. That is just so touching that these things are happening. Uh, and I've got a micro version of that myself as well. It was Lee Daniels. She's a lady who got in some trouble. She had an infection, got dehydrated. And some people at some point went, she's not on Google Plus anymore. I wonder what's up. Uh, and after a little while, they went by there. They saw she wasn't in the best of place. They took her to the hospital, which probably saved her frigging life. Mm. You know? uh, and they made sure that her house was clean again. She was eating again, getting hydrated again. Uh, when I heard that story, I s sent one of my own old cameras to her because apparently she had to sell her all gear, but she was a photographer. Uh, and we know what it's like when you can't do your passion anymore. It's really difficult to heal again in life. Mm -hmm. So like, damn it, I'm just going to send it over and make sure that she can do the stuff that makes her feel good again. Yeah. And there's so many of these stories happening everywhere because of social media. Yeah, and uh, Tamara I, I think it's and her husband were the ones mm -hmm. who helped Lee. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're... Uh, on life, she's on life through the lens. I might add. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Yeah, it's very very cool. Mm -hmm. What uh, what has either surprised or disappointed you, Kelly? Uh, there are no disappointments. Uh, I think that I am surprised at the level of um, connection that people are are getting, myself included. Um, that I acquired myself, you know, a mentor or two in the beginning, and that was just because a couple of photographers were just so nice, you know. The one I'll, I'll constantly mention is Helen Satiriatis because um, it was just with comments that I made on her images and, you know, she hanging out with her and, you know, and her seeing that I, I had an interest and just like that, she took me under her wing and helped me out. I mean, who, who would have thought that that would have uh, happened just from, from commenting? And now I, I consider her a dear friend. I have so many dear friends from this that I never would have thought I would have. I mean, really friends that, that I would consider having, you know, 
forever. I can't even imagine not having them in my world. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's really huge for me. No yeah. disappointments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And well, yeah. Not, anybody else? Does anybody have a disappointment? Has anybody either been um, surprised, not in a good way, or just actually outright disappointed? by what they've seen in social media from our experiences? Just curious. I got a death threat one Did time. You? <laughs> yeah. Did you really? Yes. Oh, my God. From my controversial image with the, the, the model with the Native American headdress. Mm -hmm. wow. That 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 ruffled some no pun intended, ruffled some feathers, but wow. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a nice pun, though, even though it wasn't attended. <laughs> hey, show, show us the photo, Jaime, so people know oh, how I would really interested you. you are. I would I love to just show it to you for the colors, and hopefully you don't want to kill me. Yeah, <laughs> because of lay that. waste to, uh, like, Sherman, <laughs> just burning every bridge. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to my own. Just gotta find out where the heck I have it online. And in fact, this is a good. While you're looking, um, we're gonna actually. This will be a great segue to share some of our Google Plus discoveries, like Trey said. Yeah. Next, because uh, we all like looking at pictures, and I know I never, I never see enough of the young and up and coming photographers, and I, I want to. So I always love these segments because I get to see all the, all the cool guys are. So, Karen, you are a real uh, broadcast professional pro to be able to segue from racism into that. <laughs> nice. Right? There ain't nothing I can segue, okay? You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everything's got a thread. <laughs> but I mean, one of the things I did want to mention is that uh, I, I've had my situations as well where people went bonkers. Uh, I presume it's because they had their own issues in their life and they take it out on others. I do love that on social media there's a block function that works really well. On I, Google Plus there is. Yeah. 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 I love that. I've uh -huh. utilized that. I've worked that one very oh, well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I, that's one of my favorite buttons. Mine too, <laughs> I have to say. Hey, so tell us about this image, Jaime. Um, we, uh, you know, as you know, Trey, there's, a, there's this amazing costume rental shop here in Austin. Uh, Texas called Lucy in Disguise. This is obviously a nod to the the Beatles yeah. song Lucy in the Sky. So we just I go in there with uh, whatever model I'm going to shoot with. Sometimes we just go plonk around in the in the shop and just come up with stuff. And she found this. She found the headdress, and it was we chose it because it was available and it was pretty, and we had enough money to get like to rent that. We didn't have a lot of like cash on hand that day. That's it. That's the only reason we did it. It's just it's pretty, you know. And it I maintain pretty. that it is pretty. And, yeah. and oh man, the 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 pot that was stirred. So <laughs> oh, what a swizzle! It, it continues to be. But you know, I don't know. I I I stand by it. You know, the model stands by it. And, and that's that's it. It's just that we did it because it's cool, you know. It's beautiful. That that's that's it. Very very cool. So Brian Matias, do you have a discovery that you would like to share with us? Yes, I do, and I'm actually gonna. I I'm still so uh, enamored with this person that I, that I'm gonna share the same person from Life Through the Lens that I shared last week. It's not Nicole, is it? It's not Nicole. <laughs> He didn't share Nicole, actually, Trey. There is no sharing. He doesn't him. share. <laughs> no. no. That's a closed door, my yeah. friend. No, this is, I want to share Sarah Jarrett. Um, I absolutely love her. We discussed this on the show last week, and I've been kind of in this um, texture overlay, kind of high concept, high graphic uh, look, and she just fits the bill, Sarah does, and, and I, I love promoting her just because of how creative her stuff is. Um, and it's just very, very natural. Like Everything she does, the, the elements kind of fit together um, in a way that just kind of accentuates the scene, which I, I think is the absolute best use of... Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, I see I'm very easily distracted. I also talked about my attention span on that show. But that's, um, I'm going to put the link in the chat here. Everyone's chatting to me at once. Hey, Brian, want... move your window over to the left a little bit. Make it bigger. My window to the left. Okay. <laughs> yes, the famous white space. What should I put over here? Um, anyway, Sarah Jarrett, or Sarah, yeah, Sarah Jarrett is, um, in my opinion, one of the, the best finds uh, here in Google Plus for me in a long time. She's just fantastic. Um, let me go on one of her. Yeah, Co I love this. Cover up the chat. Mm -hmm. Cover up the chat. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 Where, where's Leo when you... Brian McKeish is a professional. Do not try this at home. <laughs> I tried to be all subtle about it. Like, right. you go bigger to the left. <laughs> <laughs> and here I'm just reading it like, ah, that looks great. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let's let's uh, move onward and upward, shall we? <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. That was really kind of fun. That was actually way more entertaining than I was expecting. So I'd like to thank you personally for that. Of course. <laughs> Fishbo, have you got a G plus discovery for us? Is he on Chris, mute still? Yeah, Chris might be muted. You scared him. There you go. That should be a lot better, right? There we go. <laughs> So let's see how the screen share thing works in Google+. Plus. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> so uh, I kind of figured to stay on topic, the artists who are growing because of social media. It's a friend of mine, Barry Blanchard. Yes. Uh, and Barry Blanchard got invited in the early days of Google+. Plus. He was kind of into, into photography, but, you know, it, it was one of those latent talent kind of things. That's what I keep telling myself anyway. <laughs> and he discovered people like Trey Radcliffe and other photographers on Google+. Plus. He chatted with them a little bit, and he got incredibly inspired. And it's been really fun in the last, I guess it's almost a year now, to have seen him grown from just a hobby photographer to what I would call like almost an artist. So he does a lot of these landscapes. He lives in Santa Cruz, so he's got a lot of this kind of stuff going on. He's got these wonderful beaches and sunsets, and when I look at images wow. like this, I go, wow. Uh, it might be the one-letter kind of comments. Sorry about that, but wow. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you can say, though. Yeah, I know, uh, and, and that's for a big part what I do feel with his work. Yeah. So it, it's moving in a way, right? This was with a road trip we did together. We went to New Mexico to see the very large array. We did the Grand Canyon and some other locations there. Uh, and this work has really reached the level where I will call him an artist now. And a large part of that is because his mentor was Google+, and that really inspired me. Hmm. Wow. Well, so that was my discovery. We loves our Barry. Yes, we do. <laughs> He's crazy awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yvonne, what do you got? What do you got for us besides a book full of a, about a million photos? <laughs> I have something that's slightly different than this. Um, I'm fascinated with this whole cross between uh, established photographers that are well known in the fine art circles versus people who, who are not in those circles who are just up and coming artists or photographers or newbies, whatever. And um, my discovery, I think uh, quite a few people discovered him recently, if they didn't know his name, is a photographer called Mitch Dobrowner. Uh, let me show you uh, what I mean here. He was, uh, he won an award by Sony for, uh, for, for doing some really amazing um, work with uh, these landscapes that he does. Wow. And um, um, I'm trying to uh, move here. So he does these really amazing uh, black and white images, and uh, he's actually on Google+. Plus. You can find him, Mitch Dobrowner, and uh, uh, I've known him. I've known his work for many years. Um, I've bought prints. Um, I own about 20 or 30 of his prints, and I had them hanging in my living room uh, until we moved recently, and I, I will hang them back up. And he's on Google+, Plus. and for me it was amazing because I added him and we had conversations. Here was the guy whose work I've admired for many years, and uh, he commented on some of my images. I uh, uh, asked him questions about his images, and we're able to interact. So he's a very well-known guy in the gallery circles, obviously. Like I said, just won the award from Sony. 
for his storm series right here, uh, where he was chasing the storms uh, all over the southwest, where the wow. stormy areas. I mean, you just look at this image right there. Wow. It tells you about the scale of his work and how he has a very signature black and white style. Mm -hmm. Ansel Adams had his back in the day. I think Mitch Do Browner has his very unique style that I can recognize his images among any others. Very powerful, very high contrast, uh, kind of a, a great dynamic range in his images. And there he is on Google Plus. You can add him and you can talk to him and he typically answers when you ask him questions. So um, that something that wasn't possible uh, five years ago when I first discovered him. Uh, but uh, yet, uh, yet there he is uh, taking these amazing images and interacting with, uh, with his fans. New Yorker, Long Islander, I see he's in Beth Page, New York. Yeah. Right on, yeah. Holla. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah, I just added him right now. Yeah. yeah, and for everybody watching live uh, on the Twitch channel or in the chat room, uh, we when I repost this, we will plus mention all these people uh, so that you can circle them more easily. Because I know it's kind of hard to do through this live format to search for them and whatnot. Okay, all who's right. next? Is, is it um, Jaime Barra? Jaime. I, I'm I'm kind of cheating because I didn't discover this person on Google Plus, but you will when I when I, I alert you to his existence and uh, <laughs> discovery is imminent. Yeah, just to <laughs> just to just to pump up the just push some air into this. I like artists, and this this is true. Like photographers, painters, musicians, whose work I can identify out of a lineup really easily and very quickly, and they're uniquitosity <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is undeniable and it, this this man he uh, named Nick Fury I'm going to try to share my screen here hold on a second and this guy just blows me away and are we are we sharing now okay yeah. so um when I met him uh, he was using a very simple point and shoot camera. He didn't have, you know, I'll, I'll tell, rather than tell you what he didn't have, editing, you know, software-wise, I'll tell you what he did have was, uh, was a copy of Macromedia. This is pre-Adobe, by the way. Macromedia Fireworks. Mm -hmm. That's what he was editing his photos in. And I asked him why, and he says, um, that's what I had, and it has layers. You can, it has layers in it. Uh, I was like, oh, oh, wow, and and the his colors and his work are this just they're so consistent, and the mood is so consistent, and his eye is he was like he was just born to do this in, in my opinion, and it's a it's a little on the the dark side, and is it cool if a nipple if a nipple makes an appearance here, because it very well may happen. <laughs> is that is that permissible? I think, I think Twit might not be happy about that. Well, let me let me stay away from. <laughs> kind of against uh, Google. Hey, terms of yes, Tony. Tony, what's your policy on a little nip nip? <laughs> <laughs> Too late. But, <laughs> so yeah, this 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 is Nick, and um. I'm 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 just I'm just I just admire his consistency and I admire his his vision and like I said a little on the dark side. Love it. Then that doesn't scare me away by any means. Mm -hmm. Like totally out of him already. Yeah. <laughs> so so good. Do do yourself a favor and, and and flick through some of his stuff and it's just just amazing. This, that he does so much with so little, and yet you know, your, if you if you have a vision, your vision will will be seen quite clearly. You know, despite the little uh, the little equipment that you have. I think I like him because he's it was kind of like me. Like I don't have a lot of equipment. You know, I'm just I, it's just me and my camera, and that's it. I don't own lights. I don't own anything other than my camera and. My my lens. Well, actually, now I have two lenses, but for years and years and years, it's just one. But that's wow. that's my that's my discovery. 
Wow. I love when people share uh, photographers that they love because I feel like I've just had like my own personal shopper go out and pluck me, <laughs> pluck me stuff that I might like. Yeah, that'll fit you. Oh, yeah. I look totally hot in that. <laughs> Click. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. That's yeah, fantastic. That's really good. Um, I guess you want me to do one, right, Trey? We're getting uh, close to Huh? Yes, go ahead. All right. I... <laughs> I always get nervous when I do this part. Uh, so here we are. Come on, Karen. Come on. Hurry. Do come it. on. Come on. Don't. Come on. You're hosting. Oh, God, Sam Kinison. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. All right. There's that. And here's this. So this gentleman's name is, I'm not sure exactly, Klaus Peter Kubik. I just discovered him today, interestingly wow. enough. Come on. Can you see? Yes. And I'm choosing his architecture color because... I think I'll start here because wow. it's just something kind of mesmerizing about his sense of line and swoople. <laughs> I said that for you. Very, very good. Um, I just love the wow. motion in a static image like that. And I mean, how often can you shoot blue sky and have it work out? <laughs> I just think that's amazing. That's, you know, that's cool. Um, that is really neat. I... And this is like dedicated to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. But it's so modern and so old. And this just makes me Whoa. nuts. Yeah. It just is, I just think, I don't know, his, minim, his just sense of line and flow. There's a couple of swoop. Oh, I just, that just kind of makes me crazy. That's very cool because tend to be, uh, architecture tend to be a black and white subject. I People know. want to emphasize lines and mm -hmm. shapes and angles, and they don't care about the color. But what you're showing us here is how color could be used greatly that way, too. Yep. And his color palette that he uses, you know, it's just a little bit different. And I love, I even love this little set series because it's, everybody goes, oh, that's too nothing. But it's not. It's really neat. So he does some kind of real normal things, too. But, um, yeah, his architectural stuff and his line, this is happening, and he does some other artistic kinds of work as wow. well. But I really like very cool. Uh, I really like his, his work mm -hmm. very much. Cool discovery. Cool discovery. Yeah. Miss yeah. Kelly. Him too. All right. Let's see here. Hopefully this will do it. Okay. How are we? Do you see him? Yes. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce his name. And um, David Perre or something like that. He's uh, in in France, I believe. He's a a graphic artist, um, a um, a photographer. Uh, he does a lot of book covers. Designs a lot of um, book covers. And I totally dig his stuff. He uses he's heavy on the textures. And very surreal. Totally love them. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Um, there, there's something about awesome uses of texture with these kinds of images. Right. Awesome. That, on the darker side, that's that's pretty soft for him. But um, even something as simple as this, I totally love. I think this was a book cover. Ooh, I love that. Right? Mm hmm. He has this red balloon shows up every now and then in some of the shots. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Just magical. I uh <clears throat> not quite this side of the dimension, but I love the textures, love the darkness, love the um, just the feeling of, of not really being of this and what's plane. His name again? David Pere, P A I R E. I will wow. um I will get the, the link for him. Um, but yeah, I totally just can't get enough. I just stuff. say this group has exquisite taste. You can personal shop and photos for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, right? Yeah. yeah. I think everybody's everybody's introductions have, have just pissed me off so much. 
I'm so <laughs> jealous. That's how I was day on. I was like, I'm leaving. That's it. <laughs> Seriously, there's a bunch of really good work that I have seen. So, like, wow. Well, I think I think that Trey Ratcliffe is going to share one and then take us out, Trey. Yes, I will. So here's my discovery, and then we'll go into the little um, bonus time after that. Um, going into the bonus round, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, screen share over here. So here's my uh, discovery. Uh, her name is Tanya Rochat. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I think you're right. Um, yeah, she is really cool. She's not really a photographer. Uh, she does very much her own thing. Let me switch over to this. And uh, let me go to one of her albums here. I'm sorry, I thought I had selected. So she really does these fantasy matte paintings that are crazy. They're so good. Um, and one reason I'm super excited about her, just besides her being an amazing artist, is she is writing a full how-to book for flatbooks.com mm -hmm. about how she does this kind of thing. Yeah. Like from the beginning to the end. And, you know, I've always loved matte paintings. Uh, you know, I, I started looking at matte paintings, I guess, for Star Wars back in the day. And then I've, I've looked at them all uh, through, you know, movie. I love movies. And I love these wow. things these artists do in the background of these movies. I've always wanted to try it. And, and it just always seems so epic and amazing. And whatever is in your mind, it seems like you can just kind of just lay it out on paper and, I've always wanted to do it. I've never tried it. I'm super, you know, matte painting curious. And so I'll be the first one to buy her book. This is mostly just for selfish reasons, by the way, but I'll, <laughs> I'll buy it, and I want to try this stuff because, man, how fun would it be just to be able to pull something out of your brain and just make this stuff? Does she use photographic um, elements, or is it all painting? Well, that'll be in the book, Karen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Good answer, Trey. I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes, but if you head over to flatbooks.com and sign up for the newsletter, you'll be the first to find out when it, uh, when it rolls out to the world. All right, well, before I go to this little uh, personal time, Karen, I want to thank you again for doing this and inviting all these excellent guests uh, uh, obviously, I just kind of sat back. I didn't want to, you know, get in people's way and let them You're let them say what they had to say. And I really enjoyed it. So thank you, everybody, very much for that. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to show you a few uh, new things that I've taken while here in uh, in Virgin Gorda, and I'll kind of talk through some of the shots because I'm still getting to know this smaller mirrorless Sony NEX7. Um, let me go ahead and share my, my iPhoto. And also, I took a few photos. I woke up this morning very early to get the sunrise uh, with my D800, so I'll share some of those as well. Um, actually, Trey, before you go on, I, I actually have to bow out, um, but I wanted to thank uh, you and Karen and Dave and everyone else um, for letting me on. How much are you thanking us? Enough to bow for us? <laughs> Are you literally going to bow out? Because I would awesome. actually like to see that. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, crawling, yeah. crawling is fine, too. Crawling will work. <laughs> so Brian Matias is going to be leaving us. One, two, three. Bow. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, so you notice yeah. his very curious reluctance to stand up. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have a theory about that, Trey Ratcliffe. What yeah. is that theory? I, I don't know, but he just, he wasn't budging, was he? He, he sat there. He was not going to stand up. I don't know what's going on in that house, but okay. <laughs> Pants optional hangout, right? Isn't that Wait a minute. None of you are yeah. standing up, are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's sure. Standing up stays in the hangout, right? Right. <laughs> okay, let me share this thing. Sorry, guys. I know I should be used to this by now. Okay. Hey, real quick, I'm just going to plug Twit Photo for tomorrow. We got Frederick Van Johnson co-hosting with Sarah Lane with uh, their guest, Derek Story. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Everyone tune in to Twit for that. 
Um, okay, so this is, I'm going to take this full screen. I hope it gets rid of the thing. Does that look full screen to you guys now? Uh, make it wider. I can't. It's full oh, screen. No. no, it's not full screen for us. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I can't. You'll just see my little yeah. things over there. Sorry. Well, anyway, uh, so this is uh, my family about to get on a plane in San Juan. Uh, we got on that little plane and flew over to, here to Virgin Gorda. And this is with a Sony NEX-7. There's this kind of shaft of sunlight down on the plane, and there's a storm beyond. So it shoots RAW files. I pulled that RAW file into Photomatix and kind of made a sort of my HDR out of this. I think it came out pretty cool. That is so awesome. cool. Okay. Uh, this one is that's awesome. uh, this one is using the in-camera HDR. Um, so it's really interesting. It's pretty hit or miss. I think this one came out pretty cool, actually. Um, you know, because outside, I was in the co-pilot seat, and outside, uh, it was super bright. You know how planes are. Um, and what it does is the NEX7 takes three photos super quick, and it builds them all together. It says processing, and it takes about seven seconds, and then it spits this out. And uh, there's never any ghosting. Um, I don't know really how it chooses what to ghost or what not to ghost, but um, you know you can zoom way in because you know this is a oh. it's a 24 wow. megapixel uh, camera, right? So you can get way in there, see all this wow. stuff. You can see all the scratches on the glass. It's really sharp. Um, you know, we I mean, just really it has remarkable. a very vintage cinematic kind of feel to it, you know. Um, yeah, makes me air sick just cool. looking at it. So I'd like to thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so here is uh, out the plane window. This is just a regular raw. Uh, this is a really cool area of this island called the Baths. Um, Princess Diana visited uh, this island. She thought it was the most beautiful place in the world. When you zoom in, I'll show you some things here when I zoom in. Um, so there's all these big boulders that are kind of out in the water, these sort of square and strange boulders and all these, all these beaches and secret caves that connect all these little beaches. And whoops, uh-oh. And here is the place that we're uh, staying the second week. I can find it. Uh, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Uh, oh, here it is. These, these four little huts here, um, nestled in here, this is a place called Toad Hall. And so my family's staying here, but we're also bringing down the, uh, the team from Stuck in Customs. Uh, they're all coming down to spend a week kind of uh, just having fun and brainstorming and coming up with new stuff. And so we'll kind of hang out there. Then we can kind of walk through this little path out to this beach. And then we'll see this. Uh, this is what it looks like down there. Uh, this is taken with the NEX7 also. Uh, this is just one raw file. Uh, this is not HDR or anything. Um, I did do Lightroom adjustments. Um, and I think it's just really, really sharp. So let me zoom in here. I'll show you the, the sailboat here in the distance. Hey, Yvonne's mm -hmm. taken off. I just want to say bye to Yvonne for coming. Thanks. Okay, for bye, Yvonne. Thank you for Thanks, coming. Guys. Bye, bye, Yvonne. Thanks. See you Friday. Oh, um, Trey and uh, Karen, if you guys want yes. to give away the hat, just have them email me, uh, whoever gets the hat, at Yvonne at smugmunk.com with the address. Hey, also. Yvonne, would you mind? Uh, you can jump into the thread and you can award it yourself. I'll do uh, it right now. Better if you do it. Okay, Thanks, thank guys. Thank you. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is just a single raw right out of the camera with some Lightroom adjustments. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I used to use a big DSLR to get. But, I mean, you know, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. It's one quarter the size, um, you, you know, one quarter start, of the weight. Do you think you'll start just using your, your bigger camera for the more epic shots and use your little that, one? That is kind of what I've been doing, Karen, exactly. Yeah. Well, it would so look here, like it, but, yeah. Here's another in-camera HDR. This is, I don't think I like this, but it's just kind of weird. This is a little cave thing. I thought it was the textures and colors came out kind of interesting. Here's a really good example. This is my son uh, jumping in uh, off a rock 
And when you shoot in this one mode, you get 10 frames per second. And I was, I was able to get 10 shots of him in the air and kind of <laughs> pick the best one. And well, because it is, yeah, all in focus, everything's perfect. Um, and because it is a 24 megapixel camera, I can zoom in like this, right? This is him. And even this little crop in is still 1,500 pixels high. So, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, you know, I don't even think my DSLR could do, you know, I guess maybe, I don't know how fast a D3S is or a D4 is, but, man, this is, it's really nice. So, now these next ones are with my uh, D800 this morning. And, uh, you know, this will kind of give you an idea of, like, when I go shoot a sunrise, how many different angles I get. I'm going to show you four different pictures I took, and I'll probably only release one of them. So typically when I'm at a sunrise or a sunset, I'll do a lot of different shots and I'll just pick one to release. So you can kind of see my thought process too. Um, so that's, that's the first one. Uh, this is the second one. It's sort of a, a vertical composition. Sometimes I like to put the ocean way at the bottom and the sun way at the bottom and have things dither up. Uh, this one's a little bit of a pano. I don't really like to release panos because they're so hard to view on the web. You know, they require people to click in, and the little banner is so small. People just don't click on stuff to make it big and scroll around. No matter how much you want them to open up your little special panorama viewer, nobody ever does it. So I, I just, I just don't like clicking on. I just don't like uh, uploading them, even though I do like them. Um, and here's the last one. Um, I took this with a, a 28 to 300 millimeter lens. I just kind of zoomed in right when the sun got up there and it's kind of shining down through the clouds. Um, so anyway, yeah, Karen, that was a that's a pretty good way to say it. Is um, let me unscreen share. It at, uh, I still use the D800 for like what I feel like are the big kind of epic shots. Um, and I used to carry on a big, another DSLR, my D3S, to get these other shots throughout the day. But really, the, the NEX7 has replaced that, and I, I really love it. So anyway, I'm going to add these, these photos and the EXIF info and all that stuff to my two new reviews for the NEX7 and for the D800. Nice. Uh, but I kind of want to share them here first with you that's pretty huge. That's pretty huge news that you're going to, like moving forward, you're going to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did it for the past three or four weeks just as an experiment yeah. because, you know, I've been really high on these mirrorless cameras. I do think they're the future. I'm not just saying that. So I thought, well, you know, let me just really use them. And, uh, man, it's great. Um, uh, you know, the lenses are great. Uh, really, all, every one of those photos I took is with the kit lens. Uh, and I do have other lenses, and I swap them in, in from time to time. But you know, the kit lens is actually really... Really nice. So. Can I say, Trey, I'm happy that uh, this camera made your, your good, this is your good rating. This is the, the, oh. the Olympus. And I've, I've, I've owned this for, I don't know, five, six months now. I'm, like, totally happy with it for what it is, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, the thing. You know, most uh, people really have, uh, they don't want to spend of money and so that's why I want to make sure I found a camera that was around $500 that was really really good and I think that micro four third system and that Olympus camera is a, is a really great one I hate to I hate to advise that people start going down this DSLR path and investing in a ton of lenses um, I think this whole idea you know there's this old chestnut or I don't know that's maybe not the right word there's this old maybe way of thinking that you just buy a ton of lenses and you swap out the body as the years go on. But I think that may be slipping away. It's kind of sad, too, because I have a lot of Nikon lenses. Uh, it's too bad, but, you know, that maybe that whole idea of, of buying a ton of lenses and just swapping out the body every few years, that, that notion may, may just kind of fade away as the tidal wave of new technology just kind mm -hmm. of overwhelms us. Hmm. Because the um, the NEX has those two lenses, and so if you want to shoot wide, then you just shoot with your DSLR. I mean, even if you want to shoot wide in a city where you would maybe like to use your NEX, you would have have to use your other one.
but maybe they'll come out with new lenses. Well, they're supposed to. The the NEX seven has uses the uh, Sony E lens system, and there's supposed to be 14 E lenses out by the end of the year. There's already um, I don't know maybe half a dozen or so. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a great camera. I know Sergey has it. Um, Keith Barrett has it. I've now I know a lot of people that have it. I, the guy from uh, Lytro has it. Eric Chang, uh, he has it. Um, it's just you know, it, I think for this for that class, I think it's it's the best out there right now. Hmm. Wow, that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> Big. Yeah. Did I say it was huge? It is. <laughs> Huge. The hugeosity of it. The hugeosity <laughs> is occurring as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, did anyone have any uh, miscellaneous stuff or any errata they want to throw in, Chris or Jaime or Kelly? What's the image that you uh, chose to share? You said you take a few different ones of sunsets or whatnot, and you usually pick one. So what's the one that you would have chosen to to share. I'll probably, I'm still deciding, but I'll probably share that, that last one, the close up yeah. of the sun. <laughs> that one feels pretty good to me. That's a good name for it, too, by the way. Close up yeah. of the sun. <laughs> by Just call it, call it Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> and you will no. have Icarosity. <laughs> yeah, I don't, do, do any of you guys have this problem? I have this problem that, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's just me that. So I'm I, I'm deep in Photoshop and Lightroom, and I'm really enjoying myself. And I've got my Wacom tablet, and I'm I'm playing with the colors, and just really, really into the whole visual art style. Okay, and then I go save it, and I have no idea what the hell to name the thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's, it's a real problem because it's almost like a different creative process. Mm -hmm. I love writing and creating words and being a wordsmith and this and that, but it, I really I can't seem to do both at the same time. I have to come back later and give them a, a clever name. Me too. Same I've way. never named my photos until I started uploading stuff to you know sites like DeviantArt where you have to name it something as part of the upload process. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's made me think, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of let me see a, a, a whole other dimension to the photo, but I'm with you in that I'm not thinking of the title at any point until I'm done, when it's time yeah. to upload the photo, yeah, it's because I, I have to, I have to call it something, and I'm not going to call it 00023, right. you know, I totally to, do when I upload mine, <laughs> yeah, that's cool, but, I mean, I but just, my title, I, I, I yeah, think whatever it, works, you know, just with me, it was like, Zero 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 two three. But <laughs> what does that mean? No, that's not my caption. But you know, I just leave the file name. I am lazy. I really should not do that. But, a but le oh, a little secret is like I will I will name my photos something that has just a random word that I just like <laughs> the sound of that has nothing to do with anything. You know, c clipping. Like, <laughs> why did you call this clipping? <laughs> you figure it out. You stare at it for three hours, and you'll get it eventually. But it doesn't mean anything. I'm just, I'm just throwing words in there, just to go. Okay, I'll call it something. My I usually green, think my of green what green I'm going to name it when, huh? when I'm working on. I usually think of the name is is part of why you know I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. I'm processing it the way I am. Yeah. Usually, you know, rare on rare occasions, you know, I have it where I just stare at it and I'm like, I, I, I can't even name it. I have no idea what this is. It's it it's sucks. <laughs> one. It sucks. sucks. Steaming pile number one. <laughs> 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 That's kind of the artist's prerogative anyway. You can choose the name of whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes it's used to interesting effects, like you know that famous painting that was, I think it was a French artist a couple hundred years ago, and he called it, This is Not a Pipe. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, yes. Yeah. You know, sometimes the name is part yeah, of the process. Magritte was his name. Mm -hmm. But you know why he called it that? Did you read on about that? That well, I didn't a little read bit. on it, so it just has speculations. It says, well, this is not a, it's a painting, if, if you don't, those are, oh, it's a painting of a, a pipe. It's a very simple yeah. painting. And he was asked, well, why did you call it that? He goes, well, because it's not a pipe. 
it's a painting of a pipe. Uh -huh. because they yeah. just try to try to put tobacco in it, and <laughs> you can. it's a painting. Yeah. It's not a pipe. It's a painting of one. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, maybe you that's. You into this crowd really well. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you just fit in seamlessly. Mm. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks again, Karen, for for setting all this stuff up. Absolutely. Thank uh, you for asking. Sure, it was a ton of fun, and I hope I have good bandwidth next week. I'm in a different place. Where um, are you now? What's that? Where are you currently? Well, uh, I am in currently a place. I gotta figure out the name of it. It's really nice. I, I would recommend this place too. So the place I'm in next week is called Toad Hall, um, which is a, a really nice estate. So right now I'm in a place called uh, a Merit. Uh, no, sorry, it's called Ama Terrace. And if it wasn't dark right now, I'd take you on a tour. And Ama, you can get there at amaterrasebvi-bvi.com. And uh, for British Virgin Islands, it's it's a beautiful place. It's like uh, it must be seven or eight thousand square foot home <laughs> uh, with like seven bedrooms. You guys are welcome to come down. I've only got two of them full. Uh, it's like multi layers. It's up in the boulders. <laughs> There's swimming pools and like right now I'm in I'm in sort of this gathering room with a giant. Uh, Kitchen and just it's um it's, it's there's classical music playing all over. It's very wow. nice. It's a My kids bit. are gonna wake up and wonder where mommy went. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, I mean it's actually I sit here and I work on photos and it's a little bit like The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a little creepy and lonely sometimes. <laughs> But so anyway, thank you guys for keeping me company and keeping me from going crazy tonight. Thank you for awesome. having me. Thank you. Our pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Cool, guys. All right. Well, very good. And uh, I'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Dave. And thanks, everybody else. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. bye. I'll end the broadcast now. Bye.